I want to start by relating two things that um, to introduce my topic. One, over the past two days, since Monday na, na, na antapos kahapon, nakaroon kami sa National Historical Commission kasamang EDSA People Power Commission ng isang araw at kalahati ng roundtable discussion uh, tungkol sa memory. At ang meron kaming mga inimbitang bisita, one from Chile, one from Peru, and another from Argentina. Sa tatlong lugar na ito, bansang ito, lahat sila ay nakaranas ng panahon ng diktadura, um, severe oppression, and as a result of that, nagkaroon din ng tatlo ng mga truth commission, kung saan nakapag-collect pa sila ng libo-libong mga oral testimonies, photographs, videos, etc. ng karanasan ng iba't ibang uri, uh, iba't ibang mamamayan. So, inimbita namin yung tatlo upang ibahagi ang kanilang mga experiences. At more importantly to us, kasi gusto namin mat, you know, to learn from their experience, kung ano-ano ang mga isyong hinarap nila sa pagtatayo ng kanilang mga memory museum, and then what were even the conceptual and methodological problems. Ang dami-dami namin na-pick up sa kanila. Basically, who are, who are we telling this story for? Para kanino ba itong kwento? Para kanino ba tayo nangungulekta ng mga oral narratives? Paano natin uh, ipipresent ang mga narratives na ito? Itong museum na ito ay para kanino. And, it, and that went on and on. It was very, very interesting. So of course, in the course of the discussion, ang audience, lahat Pilipino, lumabas na naman yung usual na nadidinig natin ng mga kabataan. Siguro naman di kayo kasama doon. Pero karamihan sa mga, bata, mga kabataan Pilipino, hindi na nila alam ang martial law, wala silang sense of the past, hindi sapat ang kanilang memory. Well, of course, I mean, you were not even born then. How can you have a memory? But we are hoping memory through your parents or something. But the general sense is, hindi mm, hindi alam, hindi na unawaan ng mga bata. So that's one story. The other story I want to say is that I teach history sa UP, Diliman. Uh, I teach uh, GE history, uh, Philippine history. And... You know, usually I start my class by asking the kids, okay, tell me why is uh, history the subject you all love to hate? And nobody argues with me. I just start my class with the assumption that nobody, well, there are one or two who will surprise me. Mom, di naman, I love history. Oh, my kind of a guy, you know. But normally I start with the uh, assumption that, you know, they don't like it. And why? And kadalasan ang sinasabi, boring. Well, it's really badly taught, di ba? I mean, more often than not. The textbooks are, they're nice to read if you want to sleep. I read it so I can sleep. You read one or two pages, automatic, tulog ka na. So, textbooks are boring. Pangit yung pagtuturo. Yung iba sabi kasi daw, a common uh, reason given to me, eh, mamahina yung memory ko. Which, of course, I find so as a historian, rather insulting because, you know, if you want someone with just a perfect mem memory of facts, then don't go to a human being. You can put it in the computer and you have a robot, you know, who can spew out all these facts and dates and events. But anyway, I understand. I understand the, the, the thinking of young people. And usually, dun ako nag because I want to, I have to start somewhere. And I cannot start from where I am. First of all, I am much older than my students. So I have to start where they are. And in a way, it also helps me understand maybe how young, young people think. So why, what, what is so important about history as a tool of, of learning? I think this is why you asked me to speak. Of course, I'm a lousy person to invite in this sense. I'm biased. As they say, cuentas claras. No? You be transparent. Well, I love history. I love it. And the one lesson I can share with you in life, don't, when you start working, you have to do something you really enjoy. You know, history doesn't pay you much. Alam ko, that's why it's not marketable. 
okay? Although I have to correct that now, things are changing and I can relate to you more recent experiences. But I love history, so I'm probably the worst person to ask, why is it an important tool of learning? So I will try to do something and be a little more objective, although you will of course see my biases, which I'm not hiding anyway. Now, there's a, there's a, a book uh, written by a, he's actually a historian and an educator, where he explains that thinking historically is unnatural. And for him, this is one important explanation why history is not that easy for most people. Now, wh wh why, do you, why does he say that to think historically is unnatural? You see, when you think of history, you want to understand kung anong nangyari sa nakaraan. No? The normal tendency, our tendency, is to look at it from the lens of the present. Because you're, you're not reading it in the 19th century. Something happened two centuries ago. Kailan mo bin inaaral ngayon? 21st century. So what is the normal, instinctive thing to do from the lens of the here and now? So I'm a, key, I'm a young student, 2012. I have to study this course because it's required. I'm looking at it from my own point of view, which means the present in the context maybe of my family, my friends, I don't know, my schoolmates. But maraming mga konteksto, but they're all in the present. Now, what does the discipline of history ask us to do? You can look at it from the present, but first and foremost, kailangan maunawaan yung tinatawag namin konteksto. In history, most things are context. Or I would say all things our context. Why? Nothing happens in a vacuum. People do things for a reason. They may be conscious or not conscious of the reason. But usually, more often than not, there is something, a fact, a particular environment, a social structure, an incident that prompts people to act in a certain way. Those who are very interested in the scientific technologies that are developed today to realize that all these advancements in science and technology didn't just happen yesterday. They were built on discoveries of centuries ago. And then building upon human achievements over time, we are where we are now. We can make friends across, who knows, the cyber cloud and enter into intimate relationships, I'm told. I have never tried, I have to confess, uh, through cyberspace. Yeah? This was only made possible because of previous achievements. Hindi lang siya nangyari because nangyari. Ganun ang history. When you want to understand what happened, you have to look at context. So, I'll give you a very simple example of context. I have, uh, you're passing, walking through the corridor, and then you hear someone uh, tell another, Ay, naku, kung hindi mo sabihin sa akin yan, papatayin kita. So you run and report to your teacher, Ma'am, may isang estudyante dito nagbabanta sa buhay ng isa, mukhang papatayin niya. Okay? But it was all said in a manner of a joke. That is the context. Joke among barkada. Somebody who takes it out of context will say, hmm, may bad, may bad intention ata ito. So in history, context can change entirely your understanding of the event. And one reason why context is not always easy for us living in the modern world to understand huh, is because events happened so long ago. I mean, how can you enter 19th century life? It's unreal. Another historian, David Lowenthal, wrote, the past is a foreign country. Pero at least now, foreign countries, you can see on the internet, di ba? Kahit hindi ka lumipad doon, makikita mo. You can take a virtual tour. What about the past? How does one relate? So historians have to develop all kinds of, well, we have basic conceptual foundations to the discipline, but we also have conceptual tools, I mean, methodological tools. 
that enable us to understand context. 